Hello, this is Bunting, and today I'll be covering some dubstep freeform bassy sounds in the style of DMVU. Let's go. <laughs> Hope you like that little drop because we are getting right into it, right? The first thing off, the drums. You want your whole track to sit around 120 BPM because that's where DMVU likes his stuff. And that kind of slower style, it just really hits hard, I'll tell you what. But as for the actual samples, just typical dubstepy samples are, you know, the go to. Uh, if you want samples that slap this hard, fat kicks and snares, you can go to my website, buntingmusic.com, right underneath me and in the description, and there's plenty of free and paid packs in there, right? Also, if you want to go more in-depth one-on-one, you can also book me for a lesson, and that'd be awesome. One more thing before I'm done selling out, right? Patreon.com slash buntingmusic, right? You can get this video presets, all the presets I made in this video, all the project files I've made in every video, as well as... Um, a lot more content, you know, more tutorials and other secret jazz for you, right? Of course, all that stuff goes to support me, your boy, directly, and I'd really appreciate that. But nonetheless, just get that free stuff because, yeah, it's free. Free banger samples for you, right? But anyway, back into the business, done selling out the sound design because I know that's what you guys love. This first kind of bendy lead you're going to hear in a lot of DMVU stuff, right, or some variation on it. And what it is, it's basically distorted sine wave, right? Just with a bit of post-processing to give you that sparkle, plus uh, pitch gliding and bending with this wheel here, if you see, I drew in a little automation. But let's make this right from scratch so I can go over every step and what exactly it does. Okay. So the first thing, let me actually get to this melody. Nice to have a little melody laid out. Let's get a sine wave for that kind of whistling tone, which you're gonna hear a lot in his work, right? Right away, I want it gliding and bending around. So for that, turn up this glide, except now it's actually not gliding because they aren't overlapping. If we want it to glide when the notes aren't overlapping, always glide, and legato makes it even smoother. This, you can change the how much it glides if you want more or less gliding. Of course, feel free to add in little pitch bends wherever you want for more flavor because that's where most of the expressiveness and interest of the sound comes from, right? The next thing I would go about doing is adding some distortion just to give it a fuller kind of square wave sound. Okay, that's cool. But as you notice, it's kind of assaulting your ears with that big click, da, da, which I kind of hate and I don't want to hear it anymore, so I'm going to turn up the attack. And that makes it less clicky, more smooth, and flute whistle-like. Now, for this kind of polish on top, I find the chorus really does it. I'd like to turn down the feedback because that ringing sound is not the vibe. If I want it to kind of ring out, though, all you need is a bit of reverb. Yeah, and you can mess with all the parameters on those for more or less. You can also... A bit of multiband, just to further brighten it, make it fuller. And that's pretty much the basis of the sound, right? But if you want to get a bit more interesting with it, feel free to get another sine wave on oscillator 2 and get some FM going. So turn down the level so you only hear oscillator 1. Select FM 2. And just by turning this, you're able to hear a lot of different timbres coming through. And also changing this pitch gives it a bit more high end, a bit more fullness, right? But if you really mess with the pitch and maybe like put a little, you can modulate that very easily and get some interesting warping results, you know, to automate, to put in anywhere. I did a bit of that with macro one. If I load the patch back up, but yeah, just feel have fun twisting knobs. The preset on Patreon has all these macros lined up to make it super easy and to mess with, yeah. But beyond that, sometimes it goes a little more whistly. In that case, you probably just want no distortion, just a sine wave or a triangle wave. Triangle wave sounds pretty similar to the whole patch itself, so you might want to just use that. Who cares, man? Square wave too. But yeah, okay, lead aside. 
You guys like bases. I, th I think so. I think I speak for the most of you. So I'm going to freeze this so my CPU doesn't die and I'll be right back. Okay, well that's frozen and I'm going to show you the first base layer. DMVU is pretty known for, well first his bendy lead, right? And second, his huge sustained bases, right? A lot of times he has multiple layers, maybe even a lead going on in it. But I think an easy way to get such obese sustained bases is just getting a nice wavetable. Gloric Lunk wavetables are great, right? And, you know, just slamming some distortion and compression on it. I'll just do this from scratch so you can really hear what's going on. So right away, I also have wider and OTT on this group, which make it sound bigger. So, okay, let's pick a nice wavetable. It can really be any. I like stuff that sounds fatter, but the distortion and OTT will make anything sound just freaking obese for some reason, right? So let's turn on this compressor. Just turn up the attack and put some distortion before it. And that's stupid fat. If you really want, you can put a bit of force on it. Just adds that wideness and kind of polished feel. Also, you can change the amount of distortion. You can change the wavetable position. And change the wavetable. Plenty of different options. These will all give you really fat bases as long as you have a shit ton of distortion and compression on it. Of course, to make it even fatter, feel free to add more OTT, like multiband compression stuff to it. Yeah, you know the deal. But yeah, that's great bass layer for your sound with a lot of rich harmonics, right? Another thing you'll hear him do a lot with his sustained basses is this kind of harmonic bass. And also these are pitch bent, right? Just with the pitch wheel. But anyway, sound design. I layered it with this harmonic bass, which you'll hear a lot, both layered and on its own in his work. Right? Basically, the root of this harmonic bass, so it's a sine wave always, like everything else, right? But either FM or layered with more sine waves with harmonics or just distortion, right? So without it, with it, distortion. This sinoid fold especially, you'll hear gets very clean harmonics and you could easily change the timbre quite drastically let me freeze this real quick okay as I was saying you can easily change the timbre quite drastically through just this drive knob another way to attain a somewhat similar result although not as fat is to get oscillator 2 turn the level down select FM right change the pitch or you can like layer it with the sine wave. Stuff like that. But one more way you can do it, which gives you even more control, is if you're in Ableton, you drag in a saturator, right? Turn up the drive, or don't even do that. Let's go to soundwood fold, then turn up the drive. Basically the same kind of result. Except you have more knobs like this bass for even more control. Yeah, you can turn up the depth and change this frequency as well. I like that one, it sounds super fat. And as always, you can always modulate these parameters so they change and they get a ton of different cool results, right? So that's that cool harmonic bass. We're freezing the arrangement before we move on to this screechy layer, right? For fat sustain bases, you can definitely get away with just one wavetable, but layering can make a huge difference as well. So as for this screechy layer, right, and some more details, another sine wave, distortion, downsample. You hear downsample just gives it this, uh, this just screechiness, which is freaking awesome on its own and as a layer. Um, feel free to put try bit crush to for kind of a similar but slightly different, more squarey tone. And also feel free to try any distortion. You'll hear a lot of these kind of distorted sounds in DMVU's work. Just try all different distortions, both in Vital and in Ableton on sine waves. And you'll get some really familiar sounds, not just for DMVU, 
but for a ton of freeform bass kind of artist or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, right. And on that whole group to beef it up, I put on OTT, right? I like to turn up the time so it's cleaner and output so it's louder and wider. Wider is great just because it makes things wide. Especially in headphones, it makes the basses sound so much bigger. And it's free. It's just look up uh, Infected Mushroom Wider. And you have one little parameter, width. How wide do you want it? I want it a little bit wide because if it's too wide, I feel like it kind of loses some power in a weird way. But yeah, that's solid for beef. Another thing you could do if you really want to glue them together and slam them more saturated. Right. And one thing you should do that I didn't because I'm a terrible example, right, is you should cut the lows, uh, I guess the whole group, right, pretty much on anything you're going to be doing. You want to cut the lows, right, and then put your own dedicated sub underneath, which if you want to know how to make a dedicated sub, look, I just duplicated one of the parts, right, and I'm just going to remove all the processing and just have a sine wave. Um, there we go. Now the sub will come through cleaner and louder. Right, because only one sub is playing at the same time. There won't be any cancellation. It'll be as loud and as banging as possible. Okay, so sustain bass aside, you can modulate a bunch of parameters. Now for these crazy fills that DMVU loves to do. So I froze the tracks and I'm back. <laughs> Shit like that, right? So I'm just going to go over one by one, then give you some general tips for these fills, right? Some kind of sustained bass fill, right? Uh, so what's happening here in this patch, you'll see a sine wave, like I said, just with a different kind of distortion on it, right? This time I went with a hard clip and threw on a compressor, threw on a bit of chorus for that stereo width and fullness, right? But this filter... Especially in fills, I love filters because they can make it sound so subtle, so subtle in the arrangement. Otherwise, it just like slam in, which could be cool, but filters really help with that movement. And as you see, I'm just automating that by hand, right? And of course, some OTT afterwards make it fuller. You can also add wider to all these as well, right? Now, hope you didn't miss this sound because it's pretty crazy, right? And most of that is from this corpus, right? You'll hear this in a lot of his tracks. He loves to use corpus. It's super underrated sound design tool. So first of all, I want to go into this patch, right? Uh, when you're using corpus, the patch doesn't need to be crazy, but I kind of wanted to recreate a bit of the timbre that he used. So for this, you can basically pick a wavetable, right? I just picked Clicky Robot because it's one of the fattest ones in here in Stock Vital, in my opinion. Um, I just modulated the position with these this wave here, right? And as you see, not many people do this, right? I mean, I don't know, not many people, but um, basically you have two, instead of having one peak, which is longer like this, right? If I wanted to go, if I wanted to go like that, I could. But if you lower the frequency, you can have the same rhythm, but with two peaks, which allows you to make it hit two different timbres, right? So. It's hitting like well, 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 which is a really great way to, especially in fills or in any sound design, just add some more movement and variation, you know, right within here. So that's a cool tip. Okay, low pass filter. So it has that movement dialed in. Just drag that to the cutoff. You know the deal. Compressor, because, yeah, compress everything. And corpus for that fullness and all that jazz, right? Not a crazy patch. You can definitely get a lot of DMVUE wobbles just through wavetables. Maybe a bit of FM. Just the same process of FM. You can transpose it up to 12, holding shift to move it up 12, and level down FM. You could also automate the FM. A lot of cool stuff, mess with different wavetables. You know, you get it. But corpus, okay? How does the corpus sauce work? So just dragging corpus. As you hear by default, Sounds kind of funky, maybe not great in your opinion, or in my opinion, honestly. But if you turn this tune down, it gets a bit bassier, right? And turn the decay down, it's a lot cleaner of a layer, right? So what is corpus, though? So basically, it's simulating 
uh, an object resonating, right? So your bass will be resonating through a beam, through a marimba, string, membrane, plate, pipe tube, yeah. All with different sounds, cool results. And you can tune the pitch it's resonating at, lower sound stank, and how long it resonates. A lot of time just low tune and low decay and a lot of these presets will give you great results on your basses, right? But feel free to layer them, just go stupid with them. You can also filter them. There's also some nice presets. I know Kick Tight. It adds a shit ton of sub. And besides sub, it sounds like it kind of like dials in a lot of the harmonics in a clean way, right? But that plus OTT. Yeah, Corpus, it's sick. Yeah. Now for these glitchy kind of sounds, this is just a quick way to add a glitch sound, is pretty much manipulating audio. So first of all, you need an audio to manipulate. So what I did for this is I duplicated this sound right here, control D, and then I flattened it. I start by freezing the arrangement, which takes a little second. And once it's frozen, you can right click flatten and you have little audio. And right away, if you go into beats mode, right, which is by default, have it on warp, turn the transpose. Super easy way to get some glitch sounds because sample warping, it's not, it's not great, especially on some modes, which ironically ends up sounding good. Right, and you can stretch these out BPM wise as well. Uh, let me add a little marker here so it, okay, well that's not working. Um, you can just do that, stretch it out. I have a bit different results. If you really want, you can even like have it modulate through transposing. If you click this and clip transpose, which gives you more glitch results. And yeah, throw that anywhere. You can mess with any sample. Literally, you can get you can get one of my banging bass samples, right? Just weird stuff, right? And do the same thing, right? If you want these samples, bunsmusic.com. Yeah, a lot of familiar sounds. That's how a lot of glitch sounds are made, right? Because why would you want to sound design every little bleep and bloop when you can just make the shitty warping do it for you? Yeah, that's glitch sounds. Next bass, this kind of growliness, right? Very similar process, except with a bit more directional movement, right? Chose the fat, chose. Cho chosen? I chose a fat wave table. Okay. Having a stroke here. It's okay. Right? And add a bunch of movement, right? The distortion and compression and chorus is kind of just the formula for something really fat and present, right? But this uh, phaser, right? By default, it's going to look something like this. It's stereo. You turn the offset down. It's mono. It's moving around on its own with this frequency. I like to freeze it so I can direct it with my magic automation just click that and that behind all this stuff you see now it sounds kind of like thin and kind of funky right but before the distortion the distortion just fattens anything up so yeah some nice movement yeah just your typical kind of growl like bass you know anything with some kind of wavetable right and some resonant movement whether it be in a filter like here that's the resonance or in a phaser will give you nice results with these kind of growls. All right, another thing, I automated a low pass filter opening up just because, yeah, I love those for fills especially. And together they make this amazing orchestra. I don't know, what is this? Okay, that's just a duplicate on accident. Let's get it. Yeah, like really just throw a ton of cool sounds in a fill and you should be able to do just fine. This bass right here, all right, just to quickly go over, since it's another fill bass, you wanna know, I know you're dying to know it. Uh, saw wave in it, distorted with soft clip. Wobbling with this auto filter, right? Just on quarter note frequency. I mean, with this uh, automation, uh, LFO, and chorus. Yeah, hope you're detecting some patterns here. Again, with all these bases, feel free to add in any little experiment, you know, change the position, change the wavetable, right? And have a good time. Make cool sounds. Yeah. Okay. One more thing, right, before I continue. Uh, right. Lots of little drum fills just to add movement. 
make these drums sound really tight and really give it a flow and a push and pull and the arrangement. Right? These are these are just like a somatics fill, right? Just because I thought it sounded all right. I just looked up fill, right? But feel free to arrange your own fills with any percussion sounds you have, especially toms, you know, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, there's samples for that on my site as well. Let's get it. Here's just a random vocal phrase. You can use a vocal phrase sample or an acapella, right? But you'll hear DMVU and a lot of this stuff. Let's he has get some really deep voice guy saying something, right? How do you get this deep effect? So let me just get a phrase, like let's get it, let, okay, phrase. Dot alert, Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme, right? Not not sponsored, right? Krispy Kreme. The easiest way is just to transpose. Krispy Kreme. Right. That'll do it. But if you want to change the time, so to keep it lower pitch while uh, like staying on a grid, right? You probably want to just click little spots and you know put it on time. So now it's like. Now it's kind of on beat just through these little parameters and just kind of lining up these transients or like the words they're saying on the grid, you know, cause you want it to be rhythmic and have a little flow. Uh, some more customization you can do. If you go to complex pro, you can mess with the format, have it kind of deeper, higher. Another thing you'll hear in a lot of these like vocals, especially if they're like drop vocals is you'll hear a bunch of just to really get them blown out. Maybe a bit of chorus. Right, and that's how they get a lot of those drop vocals, but I don't know how much processing he does. I don't hear a whole lot on it besides the like the deep voice effect, which is easy to do. So yeah, that's how you do it. Have fun with it. And one last thing before I conclude our time together, unless, unless you're gonna watch another video, which you should. I just add a little pitch bend and auto pan, right? For this level, whoa, 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 whoa. So auto pan, what do you do with auto pan? You pan. By default, the amount up, it's stereo, phase down, mono, you can change the rate. I want it synced and triplet, so this one twelfth rhythm gives it that ba 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 triplet triplet. Which is cool, you can also invert it. So it starts at like the bottom instead of the peak. Let's get it. Right. And one quick note on arrangement, right? Of course, like a lot of dubstep music is like this, but just have some huge bass hit on the downbeat with some cool, funny, quirky little call like this and have fun with it, you know? And as for fills, really do whatever. You know, it might sound like a super complex arrangement, but in the end, it's like pretty stuff, fat bass, uh, crazy fills, right? Fat bass. And you could really just put fills at like the beginning of every bar or whatever. At the end of bars too, you see I just cut out this bass. And yeah, watch my arrangement video for more stuff on that. Also my like how to make drops not boring video. Cause I go over that. You know, a lot of arrangements are way simpler than they seem just because it's so easy and effortless to just throw in a little fill at the end and beginning of your, your bars and whatnot. But yeah, that's that. Hope you learned stuff. Once again, buntingmusic.com if you want samples, presets, a lot of stuff for free and paid. Patreon if you want this video preset and projects, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm a sellout clearly. But if you had any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave that in the comments. If you like the video, like, that would help me out. If you want to subscribe and see more, that would also help me out, but it also helps you out because you get to see more content when it's uploaded. Also hit the bell so you get notifications because that'd be awesome. Another thing, right, as I'm just rambling off, is Discord. Discord, it's a nice online community, right, chat room, and you can hang out and voice chat and do all sorts of stuff with other homies. I have a Discord. Join that. Link is in the description if you want to hang out with me and the homies. And that's all I can think of. Thanks for watching, guys. You mean the world to me. Love you. Hope you love this video. And peace out. Stay creative.